I am talking about the radio contrast agents of the CT scan, not talking of the contrast agent of the MRI because the kidney dysfunction person should not should 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 never be exposed to the MRI contrast agent. But the gadolinium based contrast agent should not be given to a person with a uh, compromised kidney function. If at all given, it should be given only for once in lifetime. It should not be repeated again because of some important life threatening complication of the gadolinium contrast that is called as nephrogenic systemic sclerosis nsc uh, or nephrogenic systemic fibrosis nsf and uh, again if we we have to use that contrast agent mi patient is there we have to definitely go ahead with the contrast uh, means angiography so we should properly hydrate the patient some uh, means uh, alkyl means alkaline diuresis can be induced with the help of iv soda bicarb or by oral tablet of the uh, sodium bicarbonate Next slide, please. And daily monitoring, at least for one week, of the KFT should be done. Next slide. Consider alternative imaging methods if available. So, if uh, directly means uh, some other imaging methods, I, if MRI is available, we can go ahead with MRI rather than CCT. Next one. Iso osmolar, low osmolar should be used. I compared to the high osmolar and. Uh, they recommend IV volume expansion with the help of the, I, I told you, the patient should be hydrated with the isotonic saline sodium chloride, but the normal saline should be used, sodium bicarbonate solution should be given, and uh, uh, they oral actually therapy may not be used for the contrast induced nephropathy. So, because we, we cannot be ensuring the proper uh, intake, of, um, intake actually, so because of that, IV should be given. Then, uh, uh, in such patient actually, Use of the neck is given along with uh, sodium means normal saline along with the uh, alkaline diuresis and use of the theophylline is prevented is not recommended use of the phenylalanine is not recommended and uh, prophylactic use of the hemodialysis now the contrast is being given and usko indication nahi hai dialysis ka lekin hum log dialysis deke contrast nikal lenge aisa tab hota hai jab patient dialysis dependent hota hai it is not for the suppose 1.5 creatine is there CAG karna hai, angiography karna hai, and hum log CAG karke usko dialysis karna hai. This is not recommended. So this, matlab, they are suggesting not to use prophylactic intermittent hemodialysis or hemodifiltration for the contrast media removal in the patient with the increased risk of AKI. Matlab, AKI ho jayega, isliye hum log contrast ko nikal le. This is not recommended. This will be required kahan pe? The patient is dialysis, already dialysis dependent. Hai. So we have to synchronize. Ki bhai, patient ka angiography bhi karna hai, aur hum ko dialysis bhi karna hai. So, what do you do? First, contrast and then do dialysis. So, the contrast agent as far as possible is removed. If it's angiography or if it's contrast examination CT, so both can be done just before the dialysis. I think this will be last slide. Thank you. And next, next one, if I totally agree my name. Okay. Dialysis intervention for the treatment of AKI. Yeah, this will be basically uh, the treatment of uh, means renal replacement therapy will be guided by Presence of urea, creatinine, sodium, potassium, volume status. Five And again, mental status. So, AKI person, urea of 100 will be affecting in mental status. CKD person, urea of 200 may not be able to hamper his mental status. So, AKI people, they have mental, mental cardiac stability, mental stability jaldi kharaab hoga. So, urea of 1 of 50, urea of 100 is indication to go with the dialysis. Hyperkalemia is there. You have to differentiate. Metabolic acidosis is there. Indication of dialysis is there. Let's go with, with the dialysis. Next slide, please. Yeah, the, the causes of the AKI in the uh, hospital setting. Acute tubular necrosis, acute on chronic CKD. Generally, acute on chronic CKD, uh, acute on chronic CKD, we see a lot of patients. Obstruction also, acute interstitial nephritis of the cases. Even I have few RPG and vascular proper nephrology cases and pre renal important medicine. And, and acute tubular necrosis, it, again, it's not a disease, it's a manifestation actually. It may happen in hypotension, it may happen because of drugs, it may happen because of vasculitis. So it's a basically a manifestation. Tubules are necrosed, and now the regeneration of the tubule will not be 100%. Maybe after three months, the patient may become dialysis independent, but he will be left with that. Secret stigma because creatine will remain a bit of high as compared to the normal person. Next slide, please.
So S3 segment of the this I should have thought is in the pathophysiology. S3 segment of the uh, proximal tubule is the most sensitive one because here the uh, two arteries they have a overlapping zone. So because of this, the means oxygen tension is bit low, and this is the portion which is compromised generally when the hypotension, hypoxemia, any compromise in the renal perfusion is there. The S3 segment of the proximal tubule is affected. So frequently, so proximal tubulopathy is more common. Hypoperfusion, hypotension. Next slide, please. Uh, this was repeated again. This will be repetition. Uh, I have already explained so many times. Uh, this also. Next one, the cause, cause related. Actually, I I didn't have time to. Okay. Uh, next one. Next slide. Oh, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Can you take a, uh, yeah. can you stay here? Uh, pathophysiology of the heme. Can you take, uh, yeah. heme pigment nephropathy. Heme pigment nephropathy. Actually, pigment nephropathy is of uh, uh, two, two types, actually. Pigment nephropathy means what will happen? Okay, let me tell you. Pigment nephropathy means what will happen? Some pigments are there. They are obstructing the tubule. They are not obstructing the ureter. They are not obstructing the bladder. They are not obstructing the ureter. Rather, they are obstructing the tubule. Tubules means what will happen? Glomerulus is the lower part. मतलब हिमेचुरिया हुआ वो आके ब्लड आके वहां पे सेट हो गया ट्यूबल्स में बैठ गया एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड ट्यूब लिगमेंट नेफ्रोपैथी तो व्हेन वी व्हेन व्हेन इट मे हैपन अब होगा जब क्या होगा हीमोग्लोबिन यूरिया मतलब कि अगर कोई मतलब हीमोलाइटिक एनीमिया हो गया हीमोलाइटिक एनीमिया अगर हो गया तो मतलब द ब्लड विल बी फुल ऑफ आरबीसी नॉट मतलब जनरली द देयर इज आरबीसी इन द ब्लड बट व्हेन हीमोग्लोबिन मींस हीमोलाइटिक एनीमिया इज देयर the hemoglobin will get released and now the hemoglobin is not good for tubules it is absolutely bad for because hemoglobin mein kya hota hai hemoglobin mein iron hota hai and iron is oxidant agent so it will damage the tubules so tubulopathy will happen and it will obstruct the tubules so isme kya hoga ye patient ko loin pain hoga fever hoga to hemo this is called hemoglobin urea one is hematuria and another is hemoglobin urea तो दीज काइंड ऑफ द पेशेंट हीमोग्लोबिन यूरिया माइग्लोबिन मतलब कि ट्रॉमा हुआ कहीं एक्सीडेंट हुआ या फिर बहुत ज्यादा एक्सरसाइज कर लिया मसल का ट्रॉमा हुआ द माइग्लोबिन अगेन द माइग्लोबिन एंड हीमोग्लोबिन दे आर द सिमिलर दे हैव द सिमिलर कंटेंट मतलब आयरन रहता है दे विल बी ट्रांस मींस इंफ्यूज्ड इनटू द ब्लड एंड दे विल ऑब्स्ट्रक्ट द ट्यूब्स ऑफ द किडनी दिस इज कॉल्ड एंडोजिनस अब तक खुद का ही बॉडी का ये हो गया एक्सोजिनस मतलब कि बाहर से आया हुआ अगर कोई पिगमेंट नेफ्रोपैथी हुआ कुछ स्नेक बाइट है स्कॉर्पियन बाइट है वहां का पिगमेंट अगर आया हुआ है वो हो गया एक्सोजिनस पिगमेंट नेफ्रोपैथी तो दिस इज अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ द नेफ्रोपैथी हियर आल्सो द ट्रीटमेंट विल रिमेन सेम क्या है डायलिसिस डिपेंडेंसी विल बी देयर जैसे कि रॉन्ग मतलब इनकॉम्पेटेबल ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन वाज डन हीमोग्लोबिन यूरिया हैपेंड किडनी डिसफंक्शन मे बी द पेशेंट मे बी डायलिसिस डिपेंडेंट फॉर 3 4 मंथ्स एंड आफ्टर दैट मे बी वे कि वो धीरे-धीरे करके ट्यूब्स अगर डिसॉल्व होंगे तो किडनी खुल खुलना शुरू होगा ऑफ कोर्स द पेशेंट विल बी लेफ्ट विद सम पार्ट ऑफ सीकेडी नेक्स्ट वन नेक्स्ट वन ये सब तो रिपीटेशन ही है नेक्स्ट स्लाइड थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच